you can make air travel better. You've got free TSA pre-check. You can sign up for global entry. You can get wave fee travel credit cards. You got lounge access. You get fee reimbursements on bags. You can upgrade your flights. You know, there's lots of opportunities there to make your journey much more enjoyable. And you can apply it to both official travel and unofficial travel. Welcome to the Military Money Manual Podcast, where every episode is all about achieving financial independence in the military faster than before. We believe personal finance shouldn't be boring or intimidating. Building wealth can be simple, and financial freedom is the ultimate financial goal. Now, here's your hosts, Spencer and Jamie. Hello, once again, Spencer Reese here from MilitaryMoneyManual.com, author of the book, The Military Money Manual, A Practical Guide to Financial Freedom. Today, my co-host Jamie and I are talking about one of our favorite subjects. I think we say that every week, Jamie, but this week yeah, is I actually, think we do. <laughs> yeah, it's actually one of my favorite subjects, how to make your military travel experience better. So how to travel smarter, not harder. Whether you're traveling officially, you know, TDY, or in, I think of the Navy, they call it a TAD, or on leave, there's lots of hacks and tips to make the experience much more pleasant. You don't have to have an average or a below average or a miserable travel experience just because you're in the military. That's right. Hello, Spencer. Travel has definitely gotten less glamorous over the past few decades. You know, you look at those pictures of everyone in a suit and tie and getting served like an actual meal. It's not so much like that anymore. And so sometimes when you're traveling in the back, uh, you know, two rows from the back, right by the lavatory in the middle seat, uh, it's not very fun. And sometimes the military makes people take less than ideal flight routes or go to places where there's not a great airport experience. Um, so that's why we want to encourage you with this episode. Sometimes a simple something as simple as a room upgrade or getting an exit row or um, a main cabin extra kind of seat with a little more leg room can make your journey a lot easier. So our three main ideas and takeaways for today are number one, you can make air travel better, shorter lines, lounges, upgrades. We'll share all the details on those. Number two, hotel upgrades can include better rooms, free breakfast or dining credits, or guaranteed late checkout, and that can make your experience a lot better as well. Number three, take some control back from the military machine. We'll share how to do this and take control of your options so you don't just succumb to whatever's recommended first in DTS or the defense travel system. As always, just a quick reminder, if you have any questions or feedback before we get started, you can send that to us on Instagram at Military Money Manual or via email at info at militarymoneymanual.com. Okay, Spencer, so let's start out with our journey. We're going on a flight. How can we start making our experience more enjoyable? Well, it all starts when you actually book the flight. If it's going to be official travel, you're probably going to have to use DTS or like you said, the defense travel system. and or you might have to use a, a, a travel agent. Like I know when we were in Hawaii, we had uh, Sato, uh, S-A-T-O. Not sure actually what it stood for. <laughs> Something travel. Um. But they were they were awful. I mean, they were always trying to put you on like the absolute worst flight. They're all terrible. Every base, uh, all, all of them are bad. But one thing that, you know, a lot of people don't realize is as long as you can, you know, log on to DTS, I mean, you can book your own tickets for a lot of TDYs, a lot of official travel. You don't always have to just call up a travel agent, sit on hold for four hours while you know you desperately try to get the ticket booked because you're leaving tomorrow. I mean, you can log into DTS and you can select your own flights on there. But if you're traveling for on leave or you're traveling, you know, for your own, on your own, uh, the the card, the credit card that you actually make the booking on can can have a huge impact. So first of all, I mean, there's the points that you can earn. So like on the Amex Platinum card, you can earn 5X Amex points uh, if you book directly with the airline or on AmexTravel.com. On the Chase Sapphire Reserve, I think it's 5X points if you book on the Chase Travel Portal and then 3X points if you book directly with the airline. Um, And they come with travel insurance. So that's a lot of these cards offer uh, trip delay, trip interruption insurance. Like on the Chase Sapphire Reserve, if your trip is delayed for more than six hours, uh, it's covered up to $500 in reimbursement per ticket purchase. So if you bought a ticket for you, your spouse, and your three kids, then you're all covered up to $500 per person. So that can be really great if you want, if, mm-hmm. you know, if you're going to have to stay at a hotel overnight and it's $200 for a room, I mean, heck, you could get two rooms and put the kids in one and then, and then you and the wife in the other. Uh, or, you know, get a, maybe it's $400 for a suite with, um, 
with some extra bedrooms and you can, you can do that. So it's usually up yep. to $500. Uh, per ticket purchase. The Chase Sapphire I preferred is a lower tier card. So that actually requires a 12 hour delay or a required overnight stay before the trip uh, interruption or trip delay insurance kicks in. On the uh, MX Platinum card, and actually this is true on the Business Platinum card, the Hilton Honors Aspire, the Marriott, MX Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant, and the MX Delta Sky Miles Reserve, both the personal and the business versions. They both come with trip delay insurance. And again, it's $500 uh, as long as your trip is delayed more than six hours. That, that kicks in right away. And you know, I've had to make these claims a few times and they're actually usually pretty basic. I mean, you just you put the charges. Usually it's easiest if you just put the charge on your card. And then when you make the the claim when you make the insurance claim you just say hey here's you know here's the information my trip is delayed you know i it was supposed to leave at 10 o'clock at night it ended up leaving at six, six o'clock the next morning i stayed in a hotel for a couple hours here's the receipt for the hotel here's the taxis i took here's the meals i bought and then they just either send you a check or they just you know reimburse your account the the other thing you can do too is um book through travel portals so um Chase and Amex both have travel portals where sometimes they actually have some really good deals on flights. So Amex has the Amex Insider fares and those Mm -hmm. sometimes be uh, like, I think it's like 10% cheaper if you use points. So not always the best use of points of your Amex points. Sometimes you can get a lot more value if you transfer them to travel partners, but those are also really good. Yeah, One thing to watch out for on the travel portals is, especially right now since COVID, Almost all the airlines, if not all of them, at least U.S., are offering free flight changes. You only have to pay the fare difference. There's no more change fee for most airlines. If you book through a travel portal like the Chase Travel Portal, for example, you have to call Chase to change to make any changes to your flight. Whereas if you book direct with American or Delta or you know whichever airline, you can usually make those changes yourself online or through their app. So if it only saves you 10 or 20 bucks, it might be, not be worth your time to have to call Chase or Amex because everyone's calling right now. Travel's a mess and they're limited on people. So I'm sure everyone's seen, you know, two hour hold times. Um, So if you just like if you book with a travel agent or any other package through like Costco travel or anything like that, you have to contact your travel agent or the travel portal, Expedia, any of those to make any changes versus booking direct. Then you can just usually make it in the app, which is which can be very, very helpful. The other thing I want to mention with travel insurance real quick is you have to book your um, trip, like your airfare has to be on the card in order for you to make those claims to have the protection. So you can't just be an, be a card holder and be protected for any trip you do. It has to be booked on that specific card, whichever one you, you want to use their protection on. Yeah, I actually had a, um, a success story with Chase Travel Portal um, where I booked a flight and needed to cancel it. And they actually have uh, one of those like text robots, you know, that you can just uh, chat robots. And I was able to, on the Chase Travel Portal, you just, you know, say, this is the flight I want to cancel. And they say, how would you like the money, you know, back? It was a, it was a fully refundable fare. And I said, um, you know, just return to my card. And it went through within, you know, couple seconds and there was a, wow. it was all, it was, it was all handled through, through a chat robot. Didn't have to talk to anybody in person. So that was a, um, a pretty successful, uh, chase travel portal. That's cool. I didn't know they had a bot cause the main chase app doesn't, even, I guess chase travel does, but again, and these also, I want to mention too, is these things like travel insurance are for personal travel. If you're booking a official trip on your um, government travel card. Those are, if you're booking the government fare through DTS or, or through the, um, the SATO, the contracting company that handles your official travel on your installation, those will be refundable and changeable fare. So kind of the last couple of minutes we've been talking about personal travel a little bit more. Yeah. The other thing is finally, before uh, we wrap up, you know, making the booking, just know if you're going on official travel, know your JTR, your joint travel regulations. I don't know how many people, have, you know, basically they just go off of rumor and whatever the, uh, the DTS approving official says in their, in their squadron or or in their unit. But if you actually go read the document, it's like a thousand pages. So like it it can be a little dense. 
Uh, but usually if you just uh, control F, you know, and search the PDF for whatever phrase you're looking for, whether it's commercial air travel or uh, personally owned, you know, operated vehicle POV, you can search and you can find like all of these entitlements that, that you are entitled to. And when you go to make your DTS voucher or authorization claim, if you have the actual JTR regulation and the, you know, the paragraph number, and you can say, Hey, I'm claiming this taxi based on this paragraph. It says that I'm allowed to claim, you know, taxis are reimbursable expenses. If I'm taking it to get from my home to the airport for official travel, then it's so much easier for your DTS approving official to hit approve on that voucher. And that's, I think that's mm-hmm. something that people, I rec- I realized this. Well, when I was uh, active duty, People don't realize that like they're not robots approving this. It's humans. And if you make their job easier, and they're yeah. usually under they're usually underpaid humans, you know, they're usually GS employees or just or some an additional start- duty. Yeah, exactly. It's an additional duty that somebody was tasked with in the squadron. And if you make their lives difficult or hard, then they're gonna make your life difficult or hard. But if you can lay out, hey, this is my justification from the JTR, here's my receipts. And you're going to make it so easy for them to hit approve and you're going to get paid that much faster. And you're actually going to get paid. You know, how many horror stories do you hear of people who are like, oh, I haven't been paid for my last, you know, four TDYs and I'm owed $10,000. It's like, dude, what? Like (laughs) you spend an hour of your time getting that $10,000 that you're owed. That is a $10,000 per hour wage. Nobody in the world other than Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates makes that kind of money. So- (laughs) You need to spend a couple hours here, even if it takes you 10 hours. Okay, that's $1,000 an hour. That's a pretty good yeah. way. So, uh, worth the time. Make sure, yeah, worth the time. Make sure you know, you know your, GT, your JT, uh, JTR, Joint Travel Regulations. And uh, it, they update every month. So the easiest thing to do is just Google it, uh, Joint Travel Regulations PDF, and you can, you can pull up the PDF straight from the, the website, straight from the source, because they do update occasionally. Um, and it is written in pretty good English. I, I think it's not lawyer ease. Um, I, I know I found it pretty easy to read when I was active duty. Okay. So we've made our booking. Now we have to get to the airport. How are we going to get to the airport, Jamie? We're well, probably going to take an Uber or a taxi. <laughs> uh, one, You're such um, a millennial. I know. Uh, one of the things with, I don't how do the, how's Gen Z get to the airport? Like TikTok? TikTok taxi. Um, one of well, the I things I was thinking more with, of like the older generation taking like a, like calling a taxi cab company. I don't know. Or a, yeah, like airport super shuttle or something. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> so if you're going TDY, usually to get to the airport, that your taxi is going to be reimbursable. And I think for those expenses, it's recommended to use your GTC, but it's not actually required quite like airfare, hotels, and other travel related expenses, like official travel related expenses. So I think you should probably use your GTC, but sometimes they don't work. So, you know, do that at your own risk. Um, always best probably to use your government travel card for official travel related expenses. And the other thing too, is if you got Uber credits in your Uber account, just book the trip. And if the Uber credits apply to the trip, that's okay. You know, make sure that when you claim the expense, you're just claiming the total amount of the trip, not just what what went on to your GTC. The other thing too is remember to tip. Tips are included as part of the fare. So don't be stingy. Uh, you know, give them 15, 20%, 25%. If it's, especially if it's early morning or late at night, or they were, you know, you got like really good service, uh, throw them a tip. It's not your money. It's the government's money. So don't, um, don't be stingy with them. <laughs> Uh, if you're on leave, then hopefully you've got some Uber credits. You know, the MX Gold is uh, $10 a month. MX Platinum is $15 a month, except in December, it goes up to $35 a month. And that's uh, $200 a year right there. So uh, I know I've been able to stack my Uber credits. So I think right now I'm getting like $105 a month in Uber credits across a couple Platinum cards and a Gold card. So that's, you know, that's a great benefit there. And that's basically either it's a free meal or two on Uber Eats, or that's a free trip to the airport in, uh, in an Uber when I, when I need to go on, when I'm yep. going on leave. Um, sometimes Ubers though can be hard to schedule, uh, depending on where you live. I know a lot of places now actually let you schedule an Uber like for the next morning, which is a great service. 
but sometimes it, you live in a place where you can't do that. You don't have Uber or there's just a, a, a cab company. So just remember that, um, sometimes you have to call them up and actually just, you know, use the phone and, and book, book <laughs> a cab, book a shuttle, like Jamie was saying for the, the, uh, the greatest generation out there. The other thing too, is, uh, if you don't want to take a, a taxi or you've got a lot of bags or something, or it's just more convenient, you can drive your own car to the airport park and then get reimbursed for the mileage to the airport and back to your house. And you can also, uh, get, uh, the parking reimbursed as well. So, you know, when I was an approving official, if someone went and parked at the airport for like three months, okay, that's kind of ridiculous, man. Why didn't you take a taxi? But if you are just going on like a one week trip and the cost of two taxis, you know, from your house to the airport and back is going to be $150 and parking is $120. Well, then you're actually saving the government money by driving your own car Mm -hmm. to the airport parking. And I think mileage these days is like 50 cents. It's probably, that should probably go up a lot based on um, inflation and gas and everything. But yeah, I actually just, just saw an announcement tonight that it went up to 60, I think it was 62 cents for TDYs and like 22 cents for PCS. So we got a slight bump um, in, in mid, in mid June here, but whatever you choose for getting to the airport, whether a taxi or parking, just know it's reimbursable. I think, you know what I, it pains me when I hear people say like, it's not worth their time to input the expense into DTS. Like it's, it's the the government's job to reimburse you for expenses you have for official travel. So take the extra 30 seconds, three minutes, whatever it is to put in your expenses, like taxis and parking, um, you know, because you shouldn't have to pay out of pocket for that. And if you do, it just hurts your own wealth building and financial independence journey. So, um, that's how to get to the airport. So the next topic we want to hit is uh, checking bags. So each U.S. airline gen- offers a very generous bag pol- policy for military members and their families. And specifics do vary by airline, whether or not you're traveling on orders or on personal travel. So be sure to look that up before your trip. But the easiest way I found to do it is just simple Google search, like Delta military bags or United military baggage policy, something along those lines. And it should pop right up. Uh, recently, my wife and I flew on American Airlines from uh, to and from Cancun for vacation, which I would not recommend. Not the greatest American Airlines experience. Um, that's for another day. Uh, but their policy for leave travel allowed two free bags for personal travel. And if you're on orders, it's even more. So when we flew Delta on our PCS to Hawaii a few years ago, it was five bags. Um, I'm pretty sure that's still the policy, but five bags per person listed on the orders. So my family of five, we could have checked 25 bags for free. And a lot of times the airlines even allow you to be over 50 pounds as well, especially when you're on traveling on orders, which is great for a long TDY or deployment where your bags are just ridiculously heavy for all the gear that you have to bring. Excuse me. So we we brought 14 check bags when we moved to Hawaii and they were all covered plus our carry-on bags. So check bags are great. Um, Let's see. Another good tip on baggage is that some airlines, I've seen this with American for sure, is when the agent verifies your military ID at the kiosk, you go to the self-help kiosk and say you want to check bags and then you hit on military and the light comes on and then you have to wait for someone to come over. Once they say, yes, I verify their military ID, a lot of times the um, exit rows or main cabin extra seats open up and you can get those for free after they verified your, your military ID. And it also then prints out your bag tags as priority. So they'll put that, you know, bright orange thing in there. And theoretically, um, that means your bags come out first and, and, um, at the, uh, baggage claim did not happen to us on either leg of our, our trip with American on this. time. They were marked marked priority. They just didn't actually get any priority. (laughs) Um, anyway, I'll try not to complain about them too much today. Uh, if your bags, for some reason, don't get weighed by the airline, this is probably more specifically of your family traveling without the the service member because the service member is covered on, on all U.S. airlines, I'm pretty sure, whether leave or on orders. But your family is not. That's a great use of your $200 um, airline fee reimbursement on the Amex Platinum card or on the Hilton Aspire card. For example, it's $250 a year for the airline incidental fees. So that's a good chance to to use that if you don't have a better way to use it. For example, in a few weeks, my wife is traveling on Delta without me, just her and the, just the kids and she. And she doesn't have status with Delta right now. 
So we plan to use our Amex Platinum $200 airline fee credit to cover her bags each way, which again, if you have multiple Amex Platinums or I have one, my wife has one, we actually have, I have three and she has two. Spencer has like 14 of them or nine, I think you can, all these stack. So you can, you can double them up. So instead of 200, I have 600 and she has 400 a year. And you can obviously change them to be with whatever airline you want. They don't all have to be with the same one. So they don't cover any, um, any real military benefits on bag for personal travel, unless the service member is traveling with you. So that's an important note. But when you're traveling on orders, you should be covered by all U.S. airlines. When you as a service member are traveling on leave, you're covered. Your family, if they're with you on orders, is covered. Your family for personal travel is not. So um, the bags all go under my name when we're on, on leave. For example, if we have uh, a small enough number of bags to be covered by the policy. Right. Yeah. And even if it doesn't cover all the bags, it'll cover a few of them. So. Yeah. So one thing my wife has been really good about teaching me is to travel light. And, you know, if you are on going on leave, um, you know, a lot of times you don't want to spend any more time at the airport than you have to. And just packing a carry on bag, if you're going away for the weekend or something can be a great way both to save time and money. I mean, a lot of these, like we've been talking about, a lot of these airlines are going to reimburse or sorry, or not even charge you uh, baggage fees which I can remember a time, it wasn't that long ago, maybe 10 years where baggage fees were like never even heard of. Um, mm-hmm. You know, but it was only recently that Southwest started advertising, you know, bags fly free because the airlines realized that they had a, a money-making uh, potential here by charging people to, to carry their bags. So, okay. So let's, let's picture our, uh, our hypothetical airman or Marine or soldier here and they've they've booked their tickets they've you know used the right credit card if they're traveling on leave they've used the dts portal and selected their own flights uh, and used their gtc if they're going on tdy they got to the airport in their uber which was paid for by their uber credits or is going to get reimbursed by their approving official when they submit their dts travel voucher they went to check their bags in bags are free no problem there now they're going to get through security so when I guess we should have mentioned this when you made the booking, but TSA pre-check is an Mm. absolute essential. And the way that you're going to see this when you make the booking usually is it's going to say known traveler number or KTN. And what that allows you to do is on the back of your CAC ID card, common access card, um, you're going to find a DOD ID number. And all you got to do is stick that 10 digit number. I think it's 10 digits um, into, yeah, it's 10 digits because the social security is nine digits. You put that uh, DOD ID number into your known traveler number and boom, you should have automatic TSA pre-check applied. A couple of reasons why you wouldn't get automatic TSA pre-check applied is if you've used like a nickname or something when you made the booking. So make sure that whatever name is your like official real name on your DOD ID is the same name that you use to make the booking. I found sometimes um, uh, middle names get confusing, whether you use your middle name mm-hmm. or you don't use your middle name or use middle initial. So usually when I make a booking, I just do first name, last name. And then the other thing that has to match is your date of birth. And so that's, um, I actually made the mistake uh, a couple of years ago where I put my wife's date of birth into her p- profile and her date of birth into my profile on Delta. And so for years we were like, why can't we get TSA pre-check to work on Delta? And it was because we had the wrong birthdays. And they still <laughs> let us work. So I don't know what that says about their security. Um, but uh, yeah, so TSA pre-check. And that's free if you're a military service member. So as long as you have a CAC ID card, which I think almost all guardsmen and reservists are going to have as well, usually. Um, I know in pretty sure in ROTC, we didn't have a DOD ID number, but maybe they do now if you're contracted. I'm not sure how that works. For yeah, them. I'm not sure. Academy, Academy cadets, they probably get a, a military ID. Um, so yep, if you get that DOD ID number, that's free TSA pre-check. Make sure you drop that in there. What is that going to let you do? Well, if you've ever traveled, you're going to see there's one line at the airport that's moving quickly and is short. And there's another line at the airport full of very angry looking, sad people. (laughs) They're on the regular line. I, you know, even paying for TSA pre-check, which I think is, is it $50 for five years or a hundred dollars? $80. I think it's a hundred, maybe 80, 80, 89, maybe. I think it it might've gone up recently, but 
Um, you pay for TSA PreCheck. It's like 20 bucks a year for five years. It is the best $20 you'll spend in that year because you're going to get, I remember going through Honolulu airport and TSA PreCheck line would take us less than seven minutes to get through. And I would see people sitting in the regular line for hours. And I was just mm-hmm. like, man, if you're going to fly once in the next five years, sign up for TSA PreCheck. But you don't have to if you're in the military because you got that known traveler number. You just drop it in there. Um, and you can use it for all your airline reservations anytime you're coming um, in and out uh, or anytime you're flying domestically inside the United States. And you're going to go through TSA. Obviously, it doesn't work overseas because they don't have TSA. Um, and then you can also put it into DTS as well. So. Um, you just put it into your DTS profile and when you go and make an airline booking, it'll automatically add it. If you forgot to, you can look up the booking using the, uh, the booking ID, whatever, you know, that's record locator locator. And then, yep. And then you can, or you can, you can either, usually you can just do it through the app. So if you, if you're flying Delta, you put the record locator into the Delta app, it'll find your, uh, trip and then you can add your Delta, you know, uh, frequent flyer miles number, which you can add when you make the booking in DTS as well. And you can add your known traveler number, which again is just from the back of your CAC and you just get that 10 digit DOD ID number and drop that in there. Now, military spouses don't get TSA pre-check because they don't have DOD IDs. Um, they're not active duty service members unless, you know, there are also active duty service members if you're a mill to mill couple. Uh, but if you're a civilian spouse, civilian military spouse, then you are not going to get free TSA pre-check. So what should you do? Open up one of those premium travel cards. So like any of them, basically anything that charges an annual fee normally, but for a military service member, weighs the annual fee. So we're talking about MX Platinums, Chase Sapphire Reserve, Capital One Venture X card, Chase Sapphire Preferred, I think. Um, basically, you know, Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant, Hilton Honors Aspire card, Delta Sky Miles Reserve card, any of those top tier cards is going to travel cards is going to reimburse your TSA pre-check signup fee or global entry. And so I, what I recommend you do is you sign up for global entry. And Mm -hmm. the other thing is if you're in the military also sign up for global entry by using one of your credit cards and getting the fees reimbursed. And usually they reimburse the fees every five or four years. So you can just keep it rolling uh, as long as you keep the card open, which is a great deal. And what Global Entry allows you to do is it gives you a known traveler number. So you can drop that in when you go through TSA pre-check or you go through TSA inside the United States. But what it also allows you to do is when you come back into the United States, you get to skip the normal customs and immigration line and you go to a special line that has automated kiosks. You scan your passport and it takes a photo of you, spits out a little ticket. You take that ticket up to the customs officer And they might ask you a few questions and away you go. But Jamie, you recently just came back into into the U.S. from Cancun and you said that it was even easier than that, right? Right. We Like you said, we scanned our passport. It took a picture of us at the self-help kiosk and then we got the ticket. We um, had no line at, at Global Entry Line and we gave our ticket to the customs officer and they looked at it, took it and said, have a great day. Welcome home. And they didn't like, it was no question. So basically the global entry does a background check that says that this person is no risk of smuggling drugs and contraband in. They understand the rules. You have to acknowledge all the, I know I'm not allowed to bring meat or, you know, dairy products back into the U S and all that stuff is part of your application. So they mitigate the risk of not checking you as thoroughly as they do the main line by making that all part of your application process. So definitely recommend global entry, like you said. Again, that helps coming back into the country where a TSA pre-check helps get through TSA and the normal security line when you're when you're boarding in the US. It's a great combo. And if your military spouse or any other dependents that don't have a DOD ID number, like you said, they get global entry. It also comes with TSA pre-check. So there's for the spouse, there's no reason to not get global entry because it's killing two birds with one stone. And if you live in like um, along the border, there's another, um, is it Nexus or there's another one where if you're yeah, driving Nexus across the border, that's Century. also covered. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing with global entry is you usually have to go for an interview. And uh, I found that if you try to make a appointment for a remote interview, there's no availability for like the next two years 
I don't know what's <laughs> up with that. Uh, maybe their system is broken, but the usually you can be conditionally approved and then you can go for your interview on arrival. So uh, my wife actually did this when she came back into the US a few years ago. She flew in through LAX and they, she went to the global entry line and there was just like a little sign and it was like interview on arrival because she had applied for global entry. So she went up to the person, they asked her a few questions, took her picture. And then a, a couple you know uh, weeks later, she got her card in the mail and she was approved for global entry. So you can either ma- go to a customs and border protection CPB office and do the interview, uh, which is how I originally did it when I applied for global entry. I was living just outside of Philadelphia. Or the, I think the easiest way to do is just do the interview on arrival. So apply for global entry, get conditional approval, leave the U.S. or or and then come back to the U.S. And when you come back into the U.S., you can go do your interview uh, and then get approved for global entry while you're coming back into the U.S. And you can also do it. There's a lot of uh, pre-clearance facilities um, around the world. So I think there's one in the United Kingdom. I know there's one in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. There's a bunch of other places that have U.S. immigration pre-clearance facilities. So basically you go through U.S. customs immigration in that foreign country, and then you're put into like a little, you know, holding area, and then you board your plane and then you fly in. And when you land, you are just like a domestic passenger. You just walk off and you don't have to go through uh, immigration and, and customs again. And that's a great way to do it. Uh, you can do your interview there while you're waiting. And then you're done and you're, you're, you're in global entry. And then next time you come back to the United States, you just use your global entry. Yeah. And global entry can be used, uh, even, you know, TDY travel or leave travel. So if you have a TDY overseas or a PCS where you're coming back to the U S so you might be, you know, with a, a group of coworkers and you're the only one that has global entry. It, it's not a given with your DOD ID just to kind of hit that point home. This is, I think what probably one of the most underutilized benefits for people that have an Amex Platinum and uh, but don't fully understand some of the fringe benefits like this one. Another good one that's nice to pair with TSA PreCheck is the Clear membership. Clear is a company that um, charges you a fee to basically it's another biometric um, scan and it's not really a background check as much as they have an agreement with TSA to verify your identity. And once they take your fingerprints and take a picture of you, Clear says, yes, TSA, this is who they their boarding pass says they are. Then they walk you right to the front of the TSA pre-check line. So instead of standing there waiting for the TSA agent to check your boarding pass and your driver's license, the Clear representative does that and then takes you right to the baggage uh, inspection thing where you, you you used to have to take off your belt and your shoes. With TSA PreCheck, you drop your bag on the belt and then you're right through the line. So there's no waiting in line unless there's a small backup at Clear. Clear is really easy to sign up for. You can sign up for it online. And then the next time you fly through an airport that has a Clear, then you just have a less than five minutes for them to take your initial picture and do your fingerprints and stuff like that. And then in, on future trips, it's like a 30 second, 45 second process to get recognized by clear. And then they escort you to the front of the line, right to the scanner. Like I said, um, Spencer, you had a recent Reddit post about clear that has a pretty good hack. Do you want to share that with the listeners? Yeah. So, um, clear has a military discount, which drops the price to at the time of this recording in 2022, it, it goes from $189 to $99. So that's a great, that's a great discount right there. Of, uh, of $90. But you can also add a family member to when you sign up for the membership. So that's uh, $60 to add a family member. So now you have $99 plus $60, $159. And that's below the Amex Platinum $189 fee uh, credit uh, reimbursable. So use your Amex Platinum card, sign up for Clear, use the military discount, uh, add your spouse. And now all of a sudden you've got two Clear accounts and you're you're all set. Um, you got you and your spouse covered, and then uh, anyone under eighteen, I think, is free as well to bring through. Uh, but I think it's only one per adult. I'd have to double check that. I'm not sure. And then uh, you can also link your Clear account to your United uh, Miles or your Delta Sky Miles account, and then they're running a promotion as well where you can. I think it's buy one get two free. 
uh, or buy one, get one. So again, fully covered by MX Platinum. It's a, MX Platinum is doing currently doing $189 clear fee reimbursement credit. And if you link it to your United or Sky Miles account, then you can sign up yourself and someone else, uh, whether it's your partner or your spouse or, or whoever. Yeah, and be look for um, clear promotions as well. I know United a lot of times has promotions where there was one I've seen in the past where you would get a hundred dollars in in your United account, like United Travel Bank account, um, for signing up with Clear. Sometimes they offer like two thousand points. I think I saw one recently. It was maybe like fifteen thousand United points. A pretty decent just to sign up through their link. It doesn't cost any more. And the um, also one other note: the Amex Green comes with clear reimbursement as well but it's only a hundred dollars so but you can pair those cards and and work that okay now that we're through security we're at the airport we're through security one of the biggest quality of life boosts that i personally have experienced and and i know my wife would agree is using airport lounges it's nice to save on money and food relax away from the hustle and bustle of the gate and the chaos of people standing up way too early and blocking the hallways 20 minutes before their zone is even called so frustrating and that's one of the m- <laughs> many reasons why getting access to um, premium lounges is an incredible benefit. So, Spencer, how how do we get into lounges and what do they provide for us other than uh, the things I mentioned, food and, and getting away from the people standing at the gate? Well, Jamie, your problem is, is you're not flying in first or business class because they don't call zones when they call first or business class. They just call you and then you go <laughs> up and you don't, have to, <laughs> yeah. you don't have to worry about everybody, you know, back in zone copper snake or whatever. Uh, well, that's the problem. Yeah, Everyone so- in zone nine standing up before they even call zone one. <laughs> exactly. So hey, it's yeah. a fight to the death for that, those, that overhead space. So... Yeah. Airport lounges. I mean, I would agree, Jamie. I mean, I I remember like when I first started traveling with uh, my MX Platinum card and Priority Pass membership, and I started going to airport lounges. I was like, oh my gosh, like this is so much better. So much better. It just makes the experience actually enjoyable. And sometimes, you know, well, I think now it's kind of like it's the goose has been kind of overcooked where just every like you know the you go into uh centurion lounges now and you're just like oh yeah the entire you know 82nd airborne is in here right now <laughs> <laughs> but but that's okay you know like we're all getting our our credit cards for free so that's that's fine um yeah so i mean what are you going to get in an airport lounge like Jamie said free food and drink usually sometimes alcoholic you know sometimes they'll have beer on tap sometimes they'll have uh, a barista there making, you know, like fancy, you know, cappuccinos and, and espresso drinks. Um, a lot of them have takeaway options, which I, th- I find is like really convenient because a lot of times you get there and you're like, ah, I'm not actually that hungry, but I know as soon as I board the plane and the door closes, I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so hungry. I want to eat yeah. right now. And uh, the my favorite lounge at the moment is the uh, Capital One Lounge at DFW. It's uh, if you have the Capital One Venture X card, and if you Google Capital One Venture X Military, I'll walk you through why I applied for this card. Uh, you can get the annual fee waived if you open it before you join active duty. So uh, under their Service Member Civil Relief Act (SCRA) benefits. So if you're like a senior in ROTC or one of the Air Force Aca- or the Air Force Academy or the Naval Academy or something, uh, you can open up this card and. Then when you go active duty, send them your orders that you entered active duty, and then you should be able to get the the fees reimbursed on the card. It's a great card, um, and it comes with a whole bunch of benefits that I think take care of the uh, the, the annual fee. But anyways, just Google uh, Capital One Venture X Military, and I should be the first result. And if I'm not, let me know. So yeah, what are we talking about? Airport lounges, free food and drink. Um, usually you get like little seating areas. Uh, the Capital One Lounge, like I was saying, you get uh, free takeaway food. And it, usually it's like, it's actually like pretty nice. It's like salads and like a little bit of veggies and maybe like a sandwich, you know? But I just find like airport food in general is like usually so terrible. But a lot of times these lounges have like, have really nice options. Um mm-hmm. The Centurion Lounge. So that's, you get access to that if you have the Amex Platinum card. Uh, usually there can be a little bit overcrowded and they're trying to deal with this by like implementing rules. Like you can't uh, show up to the lounge and get access until, I think it's within, you're within three hours of takeoff. Three, yeah. Yeah. And 
but uh, you know, it's worth stopping by um, and just seeing what they have. Um, I know back when they first opened, they were offering like free massages and um, you know, some other like really nice benefits like yoga or something. Um, Mm. But that's like, I think with COVID, a lot of that stuff's gone away, but hopefully they start bringing it back, especially as they have to start competing against Capital One. I know Chase Chase. uh, is opening up their own lounges so there's a there's a lot of competition that's um, that's starting up in the lounge space, which I think is good for the consumer. Uh, like I, like we said, don't be surprised if you see a lot of military types in the Centurion Lounge. The fact that the MX Platinum is annual fee waived is pretty common knowledge now in the uh, for those who go TDY in the military, which is pretty much everyone. Uh, but uh, and oh yeah, sometimes they have like showers and stuff too, which can be really nice, especially if you're like on a long, you know multi-day trip or multi you know time zone trip if you get it like if you're connecting like two or three times you're traveling internationally it's just it can be nice to just you know uh, check into the lounge drop your bags off go take a shower you know just like feel human again a little Mm -hmm. bit but one thing you know for all these lounges that you want to do is uh just represent the military well you know like don't just be the typical joe in there and like, like grabbing all the beers and, you know, being loud and rowdy. Like, no, this isn't the place for that. Just jean shorts and a cutoff shirt and a camo backpack. Like you stand out like a sore thumb in those lounges. <laughs> yeah. The camo. Yeah. The camo backpack with all the patches on it. I mean, we've all been there, but it's a, t- it's a tough, I mean, but a lot of times it's like, you, you're going to have to wear it anyways. Right. When you're, um, when you're in your uniform. So um, and then, so the, so like I talked about a lot of the credit cards are doing their own lounges now and then, um, but then there's priority pass. And so that's a great option. Um, the best card for priority pass right now is the chase Sapphire reserve, because it offers you the, the highest tier level of the priority pass. The Amex platinum, I think is one tier down and I can't remember what you lose with that one tier it's down. mostly the uh the restaurants in the airport that cover uh, so yeah. a lot of restaurants on the chase version of your priority pass membership they may have a like 20 dollar voucher for you and a guest at a restaurant at the airport so instead of having to pay for you know 20 dollars for a hamburger or whatever you can sit down and have a nice meal 56 dollars between the two of you is a pretty nice benefit again that's on the chase sapphire reserve version of the priority pass membership not the amex platinum and um, yeah, twelve over a twelve hundred lounges participate. So you might be in, like, if you're in, you know, uh, Istanbul or in Abu Dhabi or something, there'll be a priority pass usually in the airport, and it might be the business class lounge of a, another airline that just doesn't have that much business coming through, and so they want to generate more money by by joining priority pass. Um, you can get priority pass access with a tons of cards. Like I said, the Capital One Venture X card, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, the MX Platinum, basically any of the top tier travel rewards cards are going to come with a priority pass membership. Like Jamie said, uh, you get in airport restaurant access sometimes. So I know there's this, I, I think it's in Gatwick Airport. I don't think it's at Heathrow. It's one of the London airports and there's this awesome restaurant and it was like $35 per person credit. And they don't tip in the UK. So it was great. It was like $70. <laughs> uh, so my wife and I went there and we had lunch and it was completely covered. So um, yeah, great. I, I think Priority Pass is, a, is an awesome benefit. I probably received definitely hundreds, if not thousands of dollars of freebies from my Priority Pass membership when I travel. Um, and then the only other thing with the Priority Pass I'll mention before I turn it back over to you, Jamie is it doesn't make sense to stack your priority passes. So, you know, with a lot of things, it makes sense to get like multiple priority pass memberships. But if you have the MX Platinum and you get their priority pass, that's fine. I But I, I really recommend you get the Chase Sapphire Reserve and get that priority pass. Um, and the reason it doesn't make sense to stack is because they'll have rules about like, you can't use more than one pass per day per restaurant. So you can't just like walk into, you know, one of those Ruby Tuesdays and, you know, buy everybody in the, in the <laughs> bar dinner or, uh, or lunch. For sure. Yeah. So if you're going to, you could really almost just, just activate the one through your Chase Sapphire Reserve account. If you have a couple 
cards. Most people, if they have one, they have the MX Platinum. If they have two, they have the Chase Sapphire Reserve, and then they start building from there. Um, so you could just have your Chase Sapphire Reserve card activated through your, your Priority Pass account through that card, and then don't even bother activating the ones from your other cards. Yeah, I made the mistake uh, very early on where I activated I had my Chase Sapphire Reserve, but I also activated the Priority Pass on my Hilton... I don't think it was the Aspire card. I think it was like the Hilton Honors card, which meant it was like the lowest tier priority pass. And then they don't, they have like no identifying marks on them. So I couldn't keep track of all the cards in my wallet. Yeah. yeah. And I pulled out the wrong one when I went to priority pass and I was charged like, you know, $56 or whatever for using a a airport lounge. I was like, what the Oh, because I used the Hilton one. So don't be me. Just, just open up one account, have one priority pass account. And don't be tempted to open up multiples. Use the Chase Sapphire Reserve one and you'll be all set. Yep, no benefit there. I like to research a tip for you. I like to research ahead of time what lounge options we're going to have for our airport and then our layover and our destination. Uh, For example, in the Priority Pass app, it will show you all the lounges that you can use with your membership. And a lot of them, if not most of them, include uh, two guests for Priority Pass. It's different for... Um, some of the airport uh, airline specific ones like Delta, I think Spencer will talk about that in a minute. And Amex right now, you get a guest, but that's changing in, in 2023. So anyway, that'll all be in the app. It'll show you what they have. It'll show you their hours and what terminal they're in, all that stuff. And then in the Amex app, they own the software company Lounge Buddy. So in the Amex app, if you go to uh, your benefits tab on there or on their website, you can see lounges uh, by airport. And it will also give you the um, hours, the location, and guest access and things like that. So definitely just take a couple minutes um, as your plane's taxiing to the gate, if not before your trip, depending on how anal of a planner you are, uh, and figure out which lounges you have. I will say at an airport where there's multiple lounges, you might have to do some either Reddit or Google reviews and figure out which lounge is worthwhile at honolulu for example i think they had um two or three options and two of them were just absolutely terrible like there's 1960s cheap furniture in there with like bottles of water and that's it most of the lounges are great with a lot of them have full bars have food and stuff like that every once in a while on priority pass you'll get one that's basically just a room with some couches in it and and nothing else so Just just pay attention to which one. Um, Spencer, you mentioned earlier Chase is building its own lounges, so we're excited to check those out soon. And like you said, more competition is good. And then the last um, lounge I'll mention is the airline lounges. So United Club, American Airlines Flagship Lounge. You can usually access those if you're flying the airline and in uniform. So definitely represent the military well on those days. Um, you know, if you're coming home from a deployment or whatever, like go chill in the lounge if if you want for a couple hours on your layover. Um, a lot of times for Delta specifically, if you have the Amex Platinum card, if you're flying a Delta um, Delta ticketed route, you can get into the Delta Sky Club with your Amex Platinum card, as long as you're flying on Delta on that day. They have different rules. Like, for example, right now, Delta, you can go to the lounge upon arrival. Like, you 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 know, you land in Atlanta, and then before you go get your car, you can go into the lounge and, and get a meal, get a shower, or whatever, when those finally come back. In, in the Amex um, Centurion lounges, you cannot, arri- you cannot go to the lounge on arrival. It's only before your flight or during a layover. So there's a lot of kind of gotchas there. Just pay attention to it. It's worth, I promise you, it's worth... 15 minutes of research before your flight to figure out what lounge option options you have. Yeah. I, the other thing too, is when in doubt, just Google it. Um, you know, I think it was United lounge. I tried to get access to, and I wasn't in uniform. And so I just like looked up the policy and it was like, yeah, you have to be in uniform in order to, to access the lounge. So, you know, don't, don't pick a fight with the gate agent and, but if they're if you're in uniform and you look up the rules um, and it says like hey you, you know you're on a United ticket and you're, you're in your active duty military and you're in uniform and you can access the lounge you know just ask you know you might want to ask the gate agent or the um, the lounge agent you know hey is, is this policy changed or you know something polite but it, it's not worth picking a fight over um, and again like remember that who you're representing and that if the, you know, the business person standing next to you, who's also checking in, 
if if you start you know whining and complaining that they're not letting you get lounge access it's not going to reflect well on yeah on the military so the last lounge uh, i'll mention is the uso so who can forget the the uso i i think the uso i mean it's like the original airport lounge and yeah a lot of them are a lot of them are great um a lot of them have like big corporate sponsors like i know the one in seattle i think is boeing and the one in san francisco i can't remember, it might be lockheed martin or maybe it's one of the tech you know uh apple or google or something uh but the, you know they're great and a lot of times they have like bunk beds which like if you're on a really bad like red eye flight or something it can be great just to like mm-hmm. roll in there take a little nap for a little bit and then um and then co- go catch your flight if you've got kids they're very welcoming to kids. They usually have like a, a kid's play area. They usually have like an Xbox or something set up so the older kids can, you know, game for a little bit. Um, and then they're all staffed by great volunteers. I actually used to volunteer at the USO at uh, Boston Logan when I was in uh, ROTC at Boston University. Um, and it's free with a uh, military ID to access it. And uh, a lot of times they have like donated food or like other goods or like um, little travel bags are like sometimes fantastic. I remember the Philly mm-hmm. one, uh, the Philly USO. Uh, they always had like these little like toothbrushes and uh, like little toothpaste and everything. And it was great because then you could just like grab one. And then when like after your next flight, you brush your teeth and like you're like, oh, I just feel like so much better and so much cleaner. Um, and, it, you know, you can just and then you can just throw it out. You don't have to like keep it forever. Uh, so I, I think USOs are great and I think a lot of people should, uh, should pat- patronize them. And, you know, even if you are going to go to the MX Centurion lounge, like just swing by and just like have a look around and like say hi to the volunteers. A lot of them are veterans or, um, military affiliated in some way. Like they'll, you know, they'll have a brother or sister or a mom or a dad or, a, you know, a husband who, or, or wife who served in the military. Um, and they're usually just like the nicest people. So just swing mm-hmm. by. Um, say hi, sign in, you know, cause every time they sign in, it, it gets them a little bit, you know, they can say, Hey, look at all the traffic we're getting. And then their corporate sponsors will give them more money. Um, and then if you have the ability, you know, maybe when you're doing your charitable giving at the end of the year, kick them a hundred bucks, you know, like what would you pay to have airport lounge access? Well, I mean, for, uh, the top range priority pass, it's like a couple hundred, it's in a, I think it's like $500 a year. So, um, you know, if just, consider the USO. It's one of the organizations that I, I've supported in the past before and um, just kick them a hundred bucks and you know, you'll know you support a couple couple days of, of, a, of a USO lounge somewhere that's open. I know the one in Honolulu, you know, it's, it's, it can be intimidating. Like it could be the first overseas assignment for a lot of people and they don't know anybody. And it's just nice to have, you know, like welcoming, smiling people to um, who know what you're going through and who have also been mm-hmm. in the military. So I think the USO is great. Okay. So you've enjoyed your time in the airport lounge. And I think we've just spent like 25 minutes talking about airport lounges, but they really are, <laughs> they really are great. And, uh, you can get access to all of them by signing up for, you know, the premium travel credit cards. Like I talk about my website, militarymoneymanual.com. And if you want to learn how to like maximize your military credit card benefits, I've got the military ultimate military credit cards course. It's at militarymoneymanual.com slash UMC3. You can check that out. Um, so like, let's talk about boarding. All right. So usually a lot of airlines call um, either military service members or, um, you know, military in uniform to board with uh, group one. And if you've got like a lot, if you're, if you're like ticket is like zone nine and you know that you're in the back of the plane, you're not going to have any uh, overhead space. Just, it might make sense for you to just uh, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> Move on up there and flash your if you're in if you're in civilian clothes, just flash your military ID, and you know just it's a little it's a little bit of a walk of shame sometimes with all you know everybody else like staring you down like thinking oh he's gonna take the overhead space but it's fine don't worry about it if they wanted to do it they could have signed up so <laughs> um and uh, yeah I I you know personally. I usually don't, if, when they call it, if I'm in, if I'm not in uniform and I, in the air force, we don't really travel in uniform that often. Um, I guess unless we're coming to and from a deployment, mm-hmm. but I usually don't take it if they, if they call, you know, the boarding group and I happen to be an economy for some weird reason. Um, but 
<clears throat> but yeah, I think, you know, especially if you've got a lot of kids or you got a family, take advantage of it. I I'm whenever I, I hear them call like active duty military and like some family comes up with three kids, I'm like, you go like get, yeah. get up there and get in there and get set up because it is a pain. I, I, I know I have traveled with uh, small children before and it, it can be a pain. So, yes. Um, but, um, okay. So let's talk about upgrading seats to make your, your in-flight experience a little bit more comfortable. So you can upgrade your government purchase ticket as long as there's no cost to the government. So when you purchase your ticket, usually it's going to be a uh, contracted uh, airfare or a fully refundable contracted airfare. And it's usually like when you go to book and you're on DTS, usually like your seat selections are middle seats in the back of the plane. And, yep. and, and that's it. Uh, one thing that I, one tip I will, I will give you is once after you make the booking through DTS, Make sure you add your frequent flyer number. This I did this the other day on a United flight from Honolulu to Guam, where uh, I booked it through DTS, added my frequent flyer number. It populated into my United app like within seconds. And then I was able to switch the seats just in the United app, and I, I could pick whatever seat I wanted. And uh, I could go premium seats. Uh, you know, it costs a little, you had to pay a little bit extra. Uh, but yeah, as long as there's no cost to the government, um, you can, you can upgrade your seat, you can change your seat. And what that means is just, you have to pay out of pocket, like you're responsible, but you can use points. So that, that's the other thing too is, so two examples I had of upgrading my seat. I was on a 12 hour flight to South Korea from, uh, Honolulu to Seoul. And when I checked in, I asked how much would an upgrade be to, uh, Hawaiian airlines business class. And she types on her computer and she was like, it's gonna be 500 bucks. And at the time I had Hawaiian Airlines selected as my airline fee credit uh, airline on my Amex Platinum card. And I thought, oh, I'll see if it triggers the airline fee credit. Oh, and plus it's like 500 bucks for 12 hours. It's like 50 bucks an hour. Eh, that sounds pretty nice to me for a, for a long flight like that. So I took the upgrade. I just spent the 500 bucks, put it on my own card and it didn't cost the government anything. And uh, yeah, it was nice. Lie flat seat all the way to uh, South Korea. The uh, other time I was able to upgrade was uh, Hawaii to Guam. I was on a United flight. And after I made the booking, I logged into the website and there was like, there's usually like a little button, you know, once you go manage my booking, whatever. And it says like upgrade your seat. So I click on that and it says, you know, you can spend, I think it was like something absurd, like $6,000 to upgrade (laughs) to uh, United Polaris Live Flat from Honolulu to Guam or 20,000 United miles. And I already had like a couple thousand United miles already in there. And so all I did was transferred some Chase uh, Ultimate Rewards points from Chase to United and 20, you know, enough to top me up to 20,000. And then it was, that was it, just 20,000 miles. And I was able to upgrade my seat and fly in a, you know, business class lie flat from Honolulu to Guam. And again, didn't cost the government anything. So when I go and claim my DTS voucher, Obviously, I don't claim those 20,000 United miles. I just claim the, the cost of the ticket as I booked through um, through DTS. The other thing is like sometimes when you check in at the airport, you know, at the kiosk, you'll get a little pop-up. Sometimes on, on your phone or um, actually when you're physically at the airport, you know, like checking your bags and they'll say, hey, do you want to upgrade, you know, to first class for 170 bucks or whatever? If it's a cross-country flight, that might be worth it, you know, like, six hours at 180 bucks. What's that like $3 or 30 bucks an hour? Yeah. It depends on what your time is worth and you know, how much you, how much you value, you know, getting on the plane first and getting off the plane first. And, um, you know, maybe you're, then you don't have to buy any food, right. Cause they're going to feed you as well. So it, it depends, um, on how much the upgrade is and, uh, you know, one time my wife and I were coming back from Abu Dhabi to London and we asked that the, when we checked, we always ask when we check in, you know, how much is it to upgrade the flight? And the guy said, um, 600 and we were like, oh, that's, that's way too much money. And they were like, wait a minute, are you talking about in the local currency or are you talking about in us dollars? He's like, no, local <laughs> currency it was like 200 us dollars. We're like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. now, now you've got us intrigued. So, um, so yeah. It, it just depends on, you know, what you want and if, if travel's a priority for you, I know plenty of millionaires that don't upgrade, like they only fly economy. They're like, it's just not worth it to me. The plane gets there at the same time. And, um, 
I understand. I understand that. I understand that. But for me, I think the um, the experience, the upgraded experience, is is can can be worth it. Now, if they were like you know a thousand dollars for a, a cross country flight, then it's like no, dude, that's way too much money. But um, the other thing, like Jamie mentioned, main cabin extra. Sometimes they'll just upgrade you that for free. And but if it's filled before you get there, then they can't they obviously can't put you in there if you're not a paying customer. Um, the travel credits sometimes do trigger for um, seat upgrades, but sometimes they don't. It just depends on the airline. The thing to do I would do is just Google it before you do it if you're counting on that airline fee credit, or just take the gamble and see if it works. And if it doesn't, then you have a data point. And if it does, you have the data point, and you got a free uh, free upgrade as well. Uh, but uh, being towards the front of the plane could be worth it if you got a tight connection too. So that's another thing to consider. So, yeah. all right. So Jamie, we've got our young airman. Um, it's a smooth flight so far. They made the booking, you know, correctly through DTS, used their GTC. They got their TSA pre-check number and known traveler number in there. Uh, they got to the airport in their Uber. They've stayed at the airport lounge. They're having a great time. They upgraded their flight with, with points. They were in live flat from, Hawaii to Guam. Now they're about to show up in Guam and go and check in at the hotel. How are they going to make this experience better? So when when you're traveling TDY, a lot of times you you have to first try to book, um, you know, on base if there's a, a base or an installation there, and if not, then you you have to book through DTS sometimes. But there are some exceptions, like group travel, like air crew or a conference where it's reserved by the conference or the the meeting hosts. Um, or if you're on leave travel, then you're kind of on your own. This is where some of these premium credit cards and even honestly, some of the no annual fee credit cards, like they're not even they don't even charge an annual fee for civilians either um, have great benefits. But definitely the premium ones uh, allow you to get things like room upgrades, free breakfast, welcome drinks, um, free gifts when you check in, access to executive lounges or executive floors. Um, and sometimes even after a long day of travel, something as simple as the Hampton Inn giving you two bottles of water and like an apple and a bag of chips is just a nice way to finish off the day. It seems so simple, but just having those little things like if, if, if you're traveling with a group of 10 people and you're the only one that gets handed a welcome bag and no one else has, then people are going to wonder like, hey, how'd you do that? And you'd be like, well, because I have this credit card that my buddy Spencer told me about, I, I clicked on the link on his website. I took this course or whatever. And now. I have status with with Hilton or with Marriott or with IHG or with Hyatt. So there's credit cards for all four of those of large um, hotel chains. Some of them have status just for opening the card. You don't have to have a minimum number of nights. All that, all, all any other requirements that other people have to have status are waived just by having these cards open. Um, so I know Spencer and I both have Hyatt cards, IHG cards, Marriott cards, and Hilton cards that all have incredible benefits. So for example, the Hilton Aspire card, which is free for military members and also free for their spouses to have their own account, gives you automatic diamond status with Hilton. So at select brands, you check into your hotel or even now 72 hours prior to your check-in for select brands under the Hilton umbrella, they'll give you an upgrade to your room if it's available. Sometimes it's, like I mentioned before, executive lounges or other gift um, things like that. Uh, so when you're whether you're TDY or on leave, you get to keep those points. You can get upgraded. You get freebies just for holding the right card. So uh, one other note I mentioned earlier about people not wanting to take the time to put expenses in DTS. A lot of times people don't want to take the time to sign up for loyalty programs. So make sure you're signing up for these loyalty programs at the hotels and at the airlines because... According to the joint travel regulations, you get to keep the points when you travel on official uh, TDY or PCS or obviously leave or personal travel as well. So you can sign up usually at the front desk or you can sign up after they usually have a few months or weeks where you can credit your last trip to your new account. But they're all free to join just to be a basic member. Add your frequent flyer number or your membership number to all your reservations or worst case, um, give it to the front desk at check-in. But you'd be surprised that sometimes just having a credit card, which gives you free status, makes you stand out from the rest of your group you're traveling with and gets you some of those fringe benefits. Yeah, for keeping track of all of those uh, numbers, <clears throat> frequent flyer numbers and, and membership numbers and and club, you know, memberships. I, I just keep a spreadsheet with all my numbers in there. And then I've also got, um, 
uh, award wallet is a great website, awardwallet.com. You can keep track of all of your points and miles and stuff in there, except for American airlines, which is suing them and the points guy. Um, because they don't, <laughs> they don't, they don't want people to be able to keep track of their points outside of American airlines. Um, the other thing too, is like, just have the app on your phone. You know, um, if you, if it sends you annoying notifications, just disable the notifications. But, you know, I don't know how many times I've checked into a hotel and on like on TDY and they're like, can I have your Hilton honors number? And I'm like, just a second. And I pull up the Hilton app and you know, it's two clicks and I can pull up my Hilton number and just show it to them. Uh, same thing for Marriott. Um, you know, I don't have those numbers memorized. I know some guys I've, uh, you can actually order this on award wallet where it, it's a little credit card size, um, like business card. And it has all of your loyalty numbers <laughs> printed on there. <laughs> it's so nerdy, but I, I appreciate it. I think it's pretty awesome. I, there was a guy, uh, I worked with out in Abu Dhabi who, uh, <laughs> well, we checked in at the Marriott, he pulled out his, uh, his loyalty loyalty card number and was able to give them his Marriott number. So that was pretty, it's pretty awesome. Okay. So, uh, two topics to wrap us up here. One of our longer episodes. So thanks for hanging out with us listeners, uh, circuitous travel or liquo travel. And then Jamie's going to, uh, take us through rental cars. So we talked about this in detail in episode 29, but what circuitous travel allows you to do is when you're making an Oconus PCS, you can you don't have to take the route that they dictate to you uh if the you know needs of the air force or navy or whatever army can be met with your proposed routing so this is great for families if you've got like a report no later than date at the end of the month you know you can leave your present duty station in the middle of the month take some leave and go wherever you want and get reimbursed for some of the cost or all of the cost, depending on how expensive your tickets would have been. And um, yeah, that's called circuitous travel. So the details are, are pretty in depth. Like I said, go back to episode 29 and you can listen to that. But it just allows you to take some control back. I know it's like so many people in the military and I felt this way too, but you just feel like you have no say in like where you go and when you go and how you go and I, I don't want to take a rotator out of Baltimore at two in the morning. Like that just sounds horrible. <laughs> and, and so like, and it's going a lot of times it'll, it'll stop in like four different places that you're not going to. So yeah. why not, you know, take a different route where, Hey, I'm going to go see my family in Connecticut. And then I'm going to fly out of New York city. And guess what? It's a direct flight to Berlin. And I'm going to see some family in Berlin. And then I'm going to take a train down to, uh, you know, Frankfurt or, uh, or wherever. And I'm going to go check in at my unit at Ramstein. Hey, there, like that's, that is completely legitimate routing. And depending on the cost of the flight, um, that it would have, you know, the government would have paid for, you might be able to get the whole thing for free. So, yeah. um, and then the other one too, and this one, uh, I just got an email the other day, a guy is stationed in Guam and he's going TDY back to the mainland. And he's like, can I take some leave to go see families and friends? And I'm like, yes, absolutely you can. And if you take leave in conjunction with the official travel, um, you know, you can book your own tickets and then get reimbursed for whatever the, the government, you know, contract fare would have been. And I think it was like, from Guam, you know, it's pretty expensive to get back to the, yeah. to the U.S. Like sixteen hundred or eighteen hundred dollars one way. So that's a thirty-two hundred dollar round trip right there. And I'm guarantee that you can find tickets, you know, Guam, Honolulu, and then Honolulu wherever you want to go uh, in the U.S. that uh, are going to be under thirty-two hundred dollars round trip. So that's what I advise them to do: is like, hey, make sure you know you have to talk to your approving official and you have to talk to your commander and make sure you get your leave approved, but take a couple of days of leave on the front half, take a couple of days of leave on the back half, and then you can book your, your flights however you want. And, uh, that program is called Liquo. So leave in conjunction with official travel. It's not always available. Like if you're doing a, like if you're air crew, for instance, right. And you're doing a, a TDY where you're flying an aircraft from Honolulu to, to Japan. It's not like you're going to be able to take leave on that trip. Uh, but if you have like a scheduled TDY, like you need to go to training somewhere, like, uh, you know, for us Air Force officers, Maxwell Air Force Base, right? Like we're always going there for SOS or ACSC or whatever. If you know those dates, so just take some leave a week before, take leave, you know, a week after you graduate, book your own flights, go see your family, go see your friends, uh, go on a ski trip, do whatever you want. 
And but you can get those flights reimbursed up to the cost the government would have paid to get you to Maxwell. And if you're going to Maxwell from like Germany or Japan, I mean, that's not, those are not cheap flights. So uh, have a look at that, those programs, episode 29, uh, circuitous travel or liquid travel. And you can uh, take some leave, see your family and friends and usually not pay anything out of pocket. Yeah, that's great. Um, that was a, a good episode, really detailed. I think probably the only podcast out there that goes into circuitous travel or liquo at all, but definitely in that much detail, I think. All right. Our last topic for this uh, episode of how to make your travel experience better is going to talk about rental cars. So a lot of times your rental cars, if you're on official travel, will, will be booked through DTS. If you're on leave, obviously you're on your own. Uh, but your Amex Platinum and other cards earn status, just like we talked about with hotels, with rental car agencies as well. So Amex Platinum, for example, gives you Hertz Gold status. Um, let's see the other ones. It gives you a- uh, Avis Preferred and National Emerald Club Executive just by being an Amex Platinum card holder, which, as we said a million times now, I think, is free for you, the service member, and your spouse. You can have your own accounts. So, for example, Amex Gold, you walk past the counter, you find your name on the electronic board, they'll have you an assigned parking spot or a vehicle or a, a spot number or a vehicle number. Um, and you get in the car and drive off. And at the gate to exit gate, they'll look at your ID card and scan the little sticker on the window, and then you're done. All your preferences are saved in your profile and everything like that. Very simple and very quick, usually, and saves you a bunch of time. It also allows for free upgrades. So if you're Amex, uh, or I'm sorry, if you're Hertz Gold level, if you are, if you book, I think it's an intermediate or above, you can um, get upgraded and there'll be a Hertz Gold like section of the parking garage. You can just pick any car in there. Um, so there's all kinds of benefits and, and things like that. Typically, if you're booking official travel, then you're in an economy car. Um, in very rare circumstances, the JTR provides for different circumstances. Uh, like I think it's if, if multiple members are sharing a car on TDY, then you might be able to get approval to, to get a larger car or things like that. But if you're an economy car, you're probably going to be stuck in an economy car, no matter what your status is. But with, um, with Hertz, I was able to get and to earn and keep Hertz present circle for several years. Now it got extended for COVID, which helped as well. So I think I've had it for like over three years, uh, total. And, um, there's a different president circle area in the parking garage. And I can just walk up and pick any of those cars, which is really nice. Um, if you're booking through DTS, you can't go in, you're not allowed to go in and say, Oh, I like budget. I've, you know, I'm trying to accumulate points with budget or with, with, um, enterprise. You have to put, pick whichever one is cheapest to the government and it'll, they'll be in order filtered by cost to the government. Now, what I've done and I've seen work several times is you can go back into your reservation, into your DTS and check. Like if you like Hertz or you like budget, just go back in there and check it out. And if it's not cheaper, then you don't have to make any changes. But if it is, then you can cancel your other car and and book a new one. And then you're saving the government money and getting to accumulate your status and points with the airline. So you can't really play games with rental cars as much as on official travel, but that's really the only hack that I have is just by going back in there and checking. Um, the other kind of tip I want to say, this is primarily for um, personal travel because you would use your Amex Platinum for that. But the discount code for the Amex Platinum on Hertz gets you a four hour grace period. Usually a rental car company has like a 15 or 45 minute grace period. So if you are supposed to turn it in at 12 o'clock and you show up at 1240, you, you're still okay if they have a 45 minute grace period. But like I said, with Hertz and the Amex Platinum rate, they have a four hour grace period. So if you needed a car for like 28 hours or for 15 hours, that's a great discount code to look at. Um, and that can make it better than paying for a whole nother day. So there are some options out there for your rental cars, especially on personal travel. Um, and the more status you can accumulate with a rental car agency, the less likely you are to have a reservation and then show up and there's not actually a car available for you. So a lot of great tips today. I think uh, it's important to remember that when you're when you're saving money and you're making your travel experience better, this one of the great benefits of making your experience better and saving money is letting those accelerate the savings, accelerate your, um, your savings rate and your, the amount of money you're able to put towards building wealth in your long-term investments. So if you save $200 on your travel somehow, try to put $200 more 
into your long-term savings goals if you can. So that's where the line meets between our travel hacking um, passions and our financial independence and building wealth passions is they go hand in hand because as you save money, you then use that money to save more in the long run. Yeah. The, I mean, the way I think about it is like for me, I've set up all these automatic savings programs. And so I know that, you know, whatever, 25% of my pay is going into my TSP and I'm maxing out my Roth IRA every year. And that's all automated. That's all set up. I don't have to think about that. <clears throat> but the travel hacking stuff, if I can reduce the costs of my travel, I mean, that's just more money that I have to play with, with all the other things I want to do. Um, you know, whether it's mountain biking or, you know, other hobbies or, um, giving more money to, uh, to charities I support or being able to, you know, take my family out for dinner. And so I think that's, that's where it really, comes, you know, the, for me, the joy of, of optimizing and, and of travel hacking and of getting all these benefits, uh, for free or for like a really reduced cost and making travel more easy and fun. It, it just, it all feeds back, like Jamie said, to, accelerating your journey to financial independence, being able to maintain a high savings rate, but not sacrifice quality of life. So thanks again for joining us today for this episode about our favorite ways to travel smarter and more comfortably. You know, life's short. And when you're on those long flights, if you're sitting up in the front, if you're in a live flat seat, if you just spent a couple hours waiting for the flight in a lounge, if you got through security in a couple minutes versus a couple hours, if when you land and you're going to go through customs in the US, if you can scoot through in you know five minutes, vice, one time my wife had to wait four hours in line at JFK in New York City. I mean, that's just, that's no fun. Nobody Brutal. wants to do that. So if you can skip all that, use some of the, the tactics and techniques that we talked about today, it's just going to make life so much better. And you're going to want to travel more, honestly. And, and, and you know, so much of what we do is about getting places. But if you can enjoy the journey and the getting there, that just makes life so much better. Yep. We hope today's discussion will help you uh, keep well on your way to achieving financial independence while you're serving the military and help you maximize your military benefits. Just to review, some of the main ideas from today is you can make air travel better. You've got free TSA pre-check. You can sign up for global entry. You can get wave fee travel credit cards. You got lounge access. You get fee reimbursements on bags. You can upgrade your flights. You know, there's lots of opportunities there to make your journey much more enjoyable. And you can apply it to both official travel and unofficial travel. Mm -hmm. You can upgrade your hotels. If you have the right card, you have the right membership, and that can be an upgraded room, that can be a free breakfast, that can be executive lounge access where, you know, hopefully everybody on your crew or who you're traveling with also has that access. And then you go in there for happy hour and have a few drinks together. And those are some of my favorite memories from traveling with uh, guys and gals in the military. And then uh, finally, you can take some control back from the military machine. You know, it doesn't always work, but I have so many success stories of people who are like, Oh, I was scheduled to be on the 3 a.m. rotator out of Baltimore to uh, to Germany. And I'd said, nope, I'm taking some leave and I'm booking my own tickets. And they got reimbursed and they were able to go have a great trip. I've done it myself personally. When we came back from uh, Abu Dhabi and moved to Hawaii, we went on a, I think it was like a 17 day trip all through Europe and Canada. And it was awesome. So take that power back when you can. Um, don't worry, the military will still have plenty of control over your life. But- <laughs> You know, when you when you can within the bounds of the laws and the rules and regulations, yeah, you know, why not make your life a little bit more enjoyable? For sure. Final reminder: if you have any questions or feedback, we are so grateful for the questions we get, the opportunity to share our passions with you guys, and the feedback. Um, keep them coming. You can message us on Instagram at military money manual or via email info at military money manual dot com. We appreciate you joining us today. As always, we're grateful for all of you. Keep sharing with your friends, please. We appreciate that a lot as well. We'll catch you on the next episode of the Military Money Manual Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Military Money Manual Podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. This helps others find the show, and we really appreciate it. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Hey guys and gals, Spencer here again. Before I let you go, I want to let you know about two things. First, 
my 100% free course. It's called the Ultimate Military Credit Cards Course, and you can sign up today at militarymoneymanual.com slash UMC3. I've been running this course for over four years now, and we just celebrated our 7,000th graduate. In this course, I walk you through an absolute beginner's guide to travel hacking and opening your first fee-waived credit cards in the military. Again, you can sign up today at militarymoneymanual.com slash UMC3. It's 100% free, no spam, and you can unsubscribe at any time. Second, my book, The Military Money Manual, A Practical Guide to Financial Freedom, is available on my website and Amazon today. Head over to shop.militarymoneymanual.com, or if you want the Amazon version, search Military Money Manual. This is the book I wish someone had handed me on my first day in the military. In this book, I cover the exact money tactics and investment strategies I used on my path to achieve financial independence while I served in the U.S. Air Force. The book is the best personal finance book specifically for you, whether you're an active duty, guard, reserve, a military spouse, enlisted, or officer. Any ROTC or academy cadet can benefit from the tactical and strategic advice I lay out in the book. But don't just take my word for it. Here's two reviews of the book. Ryan on Goodreads.com wrote, the most comprehensive investing personal finance book specifically written for military members I've read so far. This book should be handed to every new LT at commissioning. Matt on Amazon said, this book is incredibly straightforward, easy to understand, practical, and useful. This book should be on the Commandant's reading list. Thanks, Matt. If you're interested in the book, head over to my website, shop.militarymoneymanual.com, and podcast listeners can use promo code PODCAST to get a special discount on the ebook, audiobook, and hardcover book. You can find the audiobook on Audible, the ebook on Amazon Kindle, and the hardcover book on Amazon. Or again, head over to my website and use promo code PODCAST for a special discount. Thanks for listening.